Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors at Alpha Claims and Hire, Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company. Get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I really appreciate you joining me today. And before we start, I want to send my condolences to the family of Jack Barnes. And rest in peace. This story originally took place in 2016 and it's only today, in 2021, that the inquiry has actually come to a conclusion. The coroner has determined that he was killed unlawfully by Metrolink staff in Manchester City Centre back in 2016. Jack Barnes, 29 years old, said I can't breathe repeatedly as he was pinned down by three members of staff that had chased him through the city centre after an altercation. They have now released the body cam footage from that night and we will show that footage at the end of this video. But I just want to give people the opportunity by discussing it whether they want to watch that video because there are scenes of a distressing nature. He was restrained outside Australasia Bar in Deansgate and the dad of one suffered a cardiac arrest. He was transferred to hospital but died seven weeks later after suffering a hypoxic brain injury caused by lack of blood flow or oxygen. At the inquest at Manchester Royal Exchange, senior coroner Nigel Meadows concluded that the four men who took part in the restraint process acted with excessive and unreasonable force. He said they were overstimulated and lost control and got carried away with the bravado of the chase. Their actions amounted to the unlawful killing of Mr Barnes. The inquest said that Mr Barnes moved to Manchester from Hull in April of the same year he was killed, 2016. He stayed at several addresses across the city. On October the 11th, 2016, he spent the day travelling around Manchester with three friends, Craig Nevitt, Kamal Kershaw and a 17-year-old boy. At around quarter past eight, the group was spotted by Metrolink customer service representative Stephen Hedges and they were smoking what he believed to be spice, an illicit drug. The court was told the toxicology report revealed that Mr Barnes had traces of the drug in his system at the time of his death. Mr Hedges told the inquest that he approached the group and asked them to stop smoking the drugs and warned them he would contact the police if they didn't. At around 11.30, Mr Barnes and three other men were seen at Manchester Victoria Station. The court heard that Mr Hedges, the man that had seen him earlier, was joined by Stephen Rowlands and Matt Sellers, one of them being a former police officer. All of them were working for Metrolink via an external company called Palladium Associates. Mr Rowlands was a former police officer and had been acting as a customer service representative that night, the court heard. The men were contracted by Metrolink on a self-employed basis. Their role included checking tickets, ensuring the safety of customers and reporting antisocial behaviour. The men had received limited training, they said, that included a walk-away policy, meaning that they should phone police if faced with threats of violence. The inquest heard that Mr Barnes had become aggressive towards a member of staff. He allegedly swung a drawstring bag that hit Mr Hedges, and one member of the group was detained on the floor, while Mr Barnes and Mr Nevitt ran away, the court heard. Mr Rowlands and Mr Seller, the two other Metrolink contracted representatives, chased them across town. Brian Gartside and Paul Paul Fogarty also helped and they chased them until they arrived at Australasia nightclub. Mr Meadows said that all four men breached the company's policy when they made the decision to chase after Mr Barnes and Mr Nevitt without informing the police. Mr Rowlands told the court that Mr Sellers suggested the group take off the high visibility jackets as they chased them as they wouldn't stand out as much and Mr Sellers who was picked up on his own body cam saying we can get F for this and I don't care he whacked Steve over the head with the bag and he said don't cross over there what are you doing go on Paul go on Paul from the transcripts they have determined that they was encouraging each other to chase these men down Later, as the group caught up with the two suspects, he said, come on, Brian, we'll get him now. Grab him, grab him. Mr. Meadows said at that point, the four men, Mr. Gartside, Mr. Rowlands, Mr. Sellers and Mr. Fogarty were overstimulated and lost control of the situation. Giving evidence, Mr. Gartside told the court previously that I'd ran towards both males and Mr. Barnes then took a step towards me and I feared that he may try and assault me. 
The court heard that Mr. Barnes had not confronted Mr. Gartside and was standing still and was visibly out of breath when he was caught. I placed both my hands around his arms. I held his elbows with a firm grip to prevent him from attacking me. As he began to resist my grip and pull away, I took the decision to take him to the ground. I used my right hand to, to twist his left arm behind his back and I placed it on his chest. The, the court heard that none of the four men had received any training in restraining people as part of their roles. Body cam footage from a device worn by Mr. Sellers indicated that once Mr. Barnes was placed in the position, he repeatedly said that he couldn't breathe. At one point, Mr. Barnes said, help me, I just need to breathe. He continued to say, can I just put my arm forward? Mr. Sellers replied, no, you used a weapon against a member of staff and your hands ain't going nowhere. Mr. Rowlands, who went on to assist in restraining Mr. Barnes, said, I'll tell you what, I'll just put him out. I'm going to put you out mate alright, that he's going to go to sleep for a while, but he won't kill him. So Mr Rowlands is, is saying that he's such an expert, he can put someone to sleep, but also he's willing to take the responsibilities if something worse was to happen. Mr Meadows concluded that Mr Rowlands deliberately applied pressure to Mr Barnes neck to put him to sleep as he said. He said that these actions were dangerous and that Mr Barnes suffered a cardiac arrest after this happened. The court heard that Mr Rowlands eventually noticed that Mr Barnes had gone quiet and Mr Sellers said that he believed Mr Barnes was lying on his chest for around seven minutes. Mr Rowlands told the hearing that the male was constantly trying to put his hands up to his left pocket and I was concerned there was a weapon in there. The male was shouting at me to get off him along with threats but I realised that he'd gone quiet and I knew that he wasn't right. I felt his neck and there was no pulse. I asked Paul, who is Mr Fogarty, to try and confirm if he was alive and he said that he didn't find a pulse. Mr Gartside added, I seen that he was lying on his back and Stephen was kneeling on him and administering CPR. Body cam footage showed Mr Gartside asking Mr Nevitt, who had also been restrained, if Mr Barnes had taken any drugs. Mr Nevitt said, they're fucking killing him, they're killing him, stop killing him, get off him. An ambulance was flagged down by the group and the paramedics attended to Mr Barnes. He was taken to Manchester Royal Infirmary where he stayed until November the 17th. The court heard he suffered a subsequent seizure and several episodes of ventilation pneumonia. A brain scan was consistent with him suffering from a brain injury due to a lack of oxygen or blood flow. He was later administered to a hospital in Hull where his condition began to deteriorate and he passed away on December the 2nd. Cardiologist Dr. Stephen Saltisi said that he believed Mr. Barnes suffered cardiac arrest under prolonged restraint. It's in my opinion that the balance of probabilities when the arrest occurred, it was a combined contributing factor of the restraint, acute mental stress, significant physical exertion and the effects of the drugs that he had taken. Mr Meadows concluded that Mr Barnes died from the brain injury following cardiac arrest which was contributed by physical exertion, prolonged and unreasonable restraint, pressure to his neck and consumption of the drugs. They said that Mr Rowlands and Mr Fogarty's actions were unlawful and deliberate and Jack was killed in an unlawful act of manslaughter by one person or joint enterprise. Following the hearing, his mother Patricia Gerard said, if there was ever any trouble, my son would run, he would never harm anyone. Jack was a loving boy and deserving of life. He loved everyone around him and he was so young to have been taken away from us. The family were devastated by the lack of compassion that the four men showed to their son. And there would definitely be more to come from the coroner in the coming weeks and days. And of course in 2020 we've seen a lot of examples of police brutality. And we covered some on the channel in Birmingham where a police officer assaulted three people in three days. And of course the George Floyd case in America. But these guys were not even police officers. These were Metro Link train staff. And they felt the need to chase people down and hold them down and even decide whether they should put them to sleep. So I really want to hear what people have to say on this story. Please don't forget to pay respects in the comments. We'll definitely follow this and give you an update in the future. Rest in peace to Jack Barnes and my condolences to his family. I'll be back again very shortly with some more news. Peace. Member of staff. Oh, we just have a view. Please, you don't move me, No, no. Okay, stop moving your hands. Okay. Okay, look out for me, look at me.
Bro, can I put him in the corner? Let him go, let him go. Okay, let him go. He's not the one. Bro, bro, this is the one that we want. Bro, okay, okay. Okay. Can I put my hand No. Can I just put my no. hand forward? No. Okay. You've used a weapon on a member of staff. Your hands ain't going anywhere. Do you understand? Okay, okay sorry. Okay, sorry, bro. It's too late saying sorry. Yeah, no, but can I just finish? It's too late, no. No, but you don't understand. You keep resisting. I'm not resisting, but I just can't breathe. Can you just release my neck? No. Just my neck so I can breathe. You're breathing fine. You, you You're talking. Okay. When you hit that bloke, did you? What bloke? Yeah, what bloke, yeah. Steve, that's the other one there. That one there, walking away. Brian. I'll eat, just oh, yeah. Right. Brian, stay away. He said he'll stab you. Step away. Um, Roger, right, can't breathe. Stop resisting! Yeah, I'm not resisting, bro. Come on! Bro! Look, I'm not resisting! Stop all right, resisting! Right. Get down! Alright, alright, look at you! Behind the Look, okay, that's it, that's it. Tell you what, I'll just, I'll just put him out. I'm gonna put no, you out no, now, Colin, no, you're no, no, alright. Right, okay. Right. Stop now, stop! And I will put you to sleep. I won't kill you, I won't kill you, but you will go to sleep for a while. Grab him, grab him! Yeah, can't be. Yeah, can't be. Yes! 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 I can't be. Down! Down, no! Get down! Get off me! Down! Get off me! Uh, oh my god, he's dead. So what? Ah! Ah! You say you're going to fucking run? I didn't know! Please. Yeah. Good no, I can't breathe there. Get off! I can't breathe, I said. Stop resisting! I can't. Keep your hands there. I can't breathe. Bro, I can't breathe. Bro, can I sit up, please? Bro, I'm going to be sick. I'm sick. I'm going to be sick, bro. No, you're not. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, bro. I'm being serious. I'm going to be sick. Stop. <laughs> I can't be me. 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 I